Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on Vacation Station TV. This portion of our programming is going to be cooking with Marie. What the heck is Marie doing in the kitchen today? She's cooking and putting together a Filipino dish, which is a very traditional dish for, it's not an elite dish, it's for the masses. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's for the masses. And it's something that would pretty much be in every one of their backyards, or they could go to the wet market and they can get this stuff right away. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like farm to the table. Farm to the table. Mm -hmm. That's always good. And what is this dish called, Miss Marie? Uh, Ilocano Dineng Ding dish. Ilocano is the area where it comes from. Yes. And Ding Ding? Ding Ding is their authentic dish. Somebody at the door? Ding No. Ding Ding. Yeah. Ding 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 is... From what I'm told now that I, I talked to Miss Marie, it's kind of like the Filipino version of goulash. It's anything you can find, vegetable-wise, fish-wise, you put it together and you feed your family. Second of all, it's a healthy dish. Because if you just look at the picture there on your screen, there's no burger meat, there's no steak, there's no processed food. It's fresh vegetables and a fresh fish. But what is special about that fr fish? It's not fresh. It's, it's, smoked. it's smoked. It's smoked or grilled. <clears throat> or grilled. Yeah. So you can you, you can modify this recipe to what you would like, but we're using a smoked milk it's, fish. It's smoked milk fish, and uh, you can use <clears throat> any kind of fish you like. Mm -hmm. um, preferably grilled, but I will fry it. We're going to fry it in the kitchen. We're not going to grill it outside because that would There's only... There's a bear outside. It'll only draw Rosie into the cabin and we don't want that. <laughs> when they smell fish, they come a-running. So explain what vegetables you have right there. Got green, green beans. beans, which you can get anywhere, but those are really fresh and they're organic green beans. Yeah. You, I, I don't recommend... Now, of course, you can modify this recipe to the way you want. You can use canned, but... Please don't use can anything. Can no, anything has no do, nutrients. You know, okra. Okra. And you can, can you use cut okra or it has to be whole? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can use but whole not okra. not breaded okra. Not bre no, this isn't breaded. <laughs> Bread, it would ruin the dish. <laughs> it really would ruin the dish. And then this is the butternut squash. Butter, that's a whole, hold that up. That's a whole butternut squash. And yours truly will have to strip that down and cut it into little tiny cubes. But that's the way to do it because it is fresh. Eggplant. A whole eggplant. Now, you can use the mini round eggplants, yeah. but they just didn't have them today. But eggplant is eggplant is eggplant. And, of course. One of my favorites, bitter melon. Yeah. And if it's, you've ever had a bitter melon. It's, what do you call it, gourd? Yeah, uh, it's a gourd. squash gourd. It's a squash. Yeah. And and it really it's lives bitter. up to its, it really lives up to its name, doesn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's seriously So bitter. I will just put a little bit. Please. Not a lot. It makes your lips pucker, and that is no kidding. But, but you know the benefit of this? Not eating it. No. <laughs> okay. Um, it's good for when you're diabetic. You got diabe diabetes? When you're diabetic. It's diabetic. It's one good for, what it's a good for um, eating it, and they said that it would actually uh, lower yeah. to lower your... Well, yeah, you take one bite of that, you won't want any sugar or anything huh. for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then tomatoes. We got Roma tomatoes. We prefer to use Roma. They have a little bit better taste than a um, regular round tomato. And the reason I say this as a caveat, the round tomatoes you find in the grocery store, you must, must, must look at the label. A lot of these now are GMO, genetically modified um Organ yeah, that's why uh, I prefer Roma. Roma is not. They haven't figured out how to genetically modify that yet. And, and then, of course, um, a, onion. A red onion. Now, you prefer using red onions and white onions. I onion. prefer r red onion all the time. Why? When I'm cooking, I love red onion. Yeah. But you prefer white. I, li I like the or white. What do you call it? Yellow? Yellow Vidalia. Yeah. They're sweet. These are seriously potent. You're going to taste the, the onion in whatever meal you're using. Now, there's a question I want to mm -hmm. ask you. Do you like potatoes in it uh i'm you know i'm not a big starch person so no but so, you can okay. put but potato you can put sweet potatoes or uh or regular regular potatoes russet potato if you want to have a little bit of uh, sweetness in the soup and starch because it's it's a, a soup vegetable dish mm -hmm. with fish 
With fish. With fish. So you would, it would make sense to add potatoes to it, especially if you have a big family. And, mm -hmm. and if you're trying to fill up that family, the potatoes will fill them up with the starch. And, and then what are the greens right there? Uh, this is what you call uh, sweet potato leaves. Regular, real sweet potato leaves. Now, everyone knows what a sweet potato is. Do you know that you can also eat the leaves? We eat these all the time. And I enjoy them. They're very tasty. Yeah, you can uh, blanch it or steam mm -hmm. it. I liked it. It's just as good as a spinach. Or, or or you can, if you don't have the sweet potato, you can use a watercress. Mm -hmm. Or, um, what do you call it? The spinach leaves? Spinach leaves. leaves. But the spinach, I don't like it. I find it bitter. Yeah, because of the bitterness mm -hmm. taste in it. So. And that's the iron you're eating, but it really makes a dish bitter. Yeah, that's why I don't like to use no, it. These the, do not. For the, the soup. Sweet potato does not give it a, a bitter flavor. If you've ever had, you know, you make like a chicken soup with uh, spinach in it, really mm -hmm. bitter soup. If you have a sweet potato in your farm or in your little mini garden, backyard mm -hmm. garden. Save the leaves. Yeah, save the leaves. The leaves are good. It's edible. Very. In fact, most of the leaves of all plants are edible if you're eating the vegetable. Most of them. Most of them. Check into, call your local doctor first. <laughs> so we have all the ingredients we need right here. And of course, you'll be adding more when we're at the stove. Uh, right, yeah, it, kind of like my little version. It'll be Marie's version. Because the authentic is not really this authentic. It's close. It's close. It's really close. And the dish is called again? Dineng Ding. And it's from? From Ilocano, which um, is where region, in the the in range the northern part of the Philippines. Now remember, the Philippine people, when they you say the Philippines, I, I know how people are because they ask me this all the time. It's where is that land mass located? It's not a land mass. Think of it as a chocolate chip cookie that's been broken up in a, a glass of milk to seven thousand little mean pieces. In the the southeastern part of. No, I'm saying most people think that. The Philippines is one land mass. It, it's like oh, the United it, States. It's an archipelago. It, it, that too. What, do you, what <laughs> yes. are you asking? No, no, no. I'm making a statement okay. that uh, the Philippines is not one land mass. It's 7,000 islands, individual islands, and each one has their own, for the most part, their own language, their own culture, their own foods that they grow. And through the thousands of years they've been there, these recipes have made their way into many households, including ours and thousands of others in the United States yeah, and worldwide. It's kind of mixed. It's mixed because it comes from all different places. Mm -hmm. All right, without any further ado, let's get to cooking. Don't go anywhere. Okay, now that we get all the vegetables, as you can see, all the vegetables are cut and ready for whatever the project brings us, and the fish is now in the frying pan. What are you going to set the temperature to, Miss Marie? Um, I'm going to put it on... Uh, medium like high for medi now. Medium. Oh, medium low. Medium low. Right medium now. low. Yeah. And you can see the flame starting to do what it's got to do. This pot by the way or pan we picked this up a few weeks ago and it's a non-stick ceramic pan uh, forget who makes this but i'm telling you nothing sticks to this pan we could cook uh, barbecue korean chicken and i mean brown the heck out of it and it comes right out of that pan with a little soap and water no scrubbing whatsoever so I highly recommend get rid of your aluminum pans or, you know, whatever pans you're using. Get a couple of these. It'll change your life. So we got the heat on, and we'll be back in a second when it starts sizzling. Now, of course, we'll cook a lot of this in a hyperlapse for time constraints. But what I will do is, in graphics, I'll tell you what we're doing and what's happening so you can follow the recipe. 
Now as another reminder, remember this fish is already smoked. So it's not a raw fish, it's smoked and all you'd really have to do is heat it up and then you can eat it. Being it's smoked all the, um, uh, the time that would normally take to cook a raw fish is taken out of the equation. So now that all the vegetables are properly cut and ready, we've got everything just ready to go. And it doesn't take up much space. You've got to remember, we have a little galley kitchen, and we can do a complete meal just like this. And being I cut all those vegetables, um, I, I stitch myself up after I cut half my finger off, as you can see here, and uh, lost copious amounts of blood, but... I didn't know that it got this dark this early here. It's starting to get a little, a little weak. Okay, the fish is completely heated up. Now remember, it was already smoked, so it didn't need a lot of cooking or a lot of attention. You just get it good and hot in the pan, flip it around a few times, and the fish is ready. Now we're using a fairly good sized pot because we're going to be boiling all these vegetables together. Not necessarily so much boiling as steaming them all, which is important because there's quite a few vegetables that have to be cooked. All right, Miss Marie told me that I have to cut the head of the fish. The head is going to be what um, is used in the soup. The, the fish itself will be used for the meat, the planks, and then the head will go into the soup because th there's a lot of flavor from this point up in a fish. I'll show it to you up close there. Nice and brown, ready to go. So I'm, probably, I'm just going to cut about that much. See that? That much of the head. I'll show you this way. About that much of the head. There's the, the nozzle. So about there should be plenty of flavor of the fish for Miss Marie. Back in a second. That cut nice and easy. Really did. I can hear the skin crunching. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But she'll be able to put that into the pot. And then the rest, you eat. The stuff you put onto your plate, you'll cut into uh, bite-sized pieces. You know, you can get, you should be able to get four good pieces of, of planks of fish. And then, with all the vegetables and stuff, you're eating a healthy meal. And all of us should be eating healthy meals at least once in a while. All right, now we're ready to add the goodies. Now, for, of course, first you add your spices, your herbs and stuff into the soup, so that gets into the broth, and then mm -hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm adding... So there's onion, red onions. And remember, red onions are pretty potent. They, they've got a kick to them, but they do flavor the broth of a soup better than a yellow onion. So and I look, decided to add garlic. And there it is right there. Yeah. It looks like two cloves of because garlic. Because before, you know, we, we didn't show the garlic, but, I mean, you have to, you have to taste it with, with garlic. I know that you don't Oh, everything's got to have garlic. No, I'm not a ginger person. Now, if you are a ginger person, you can buy fresh ginger at most grocery stores now. All okay. right, put your stuff in. Okay. Let's see it. Time is not on our side. Now, there's about a quarter of a large pot. This is a good size pot. Onions with the garlic. You're going to cook it for how long? Five to ten minutes just to get the aroma and you know it's water boiling so it's got to have a taste in it right. first. It's the flavor into the mm -hmm. and she's not going to over boil it and that's what a lot of people do. They over boil their vegetables and then it, it, it's kind of like a mush. You don't want to do that. Just a few minutes under boiling water. Here's the tomatoes. These are the Roma tomatoes. Non-GMO Roma tomatoes. Tomatoes cook quickly, so you don't definitely don't want to ever overboil a tomato. 
and then she's got the eggplant. Not yet. Not yet. So I'm gonna add a fish sauce, which so I'm gonna add the fish sauce. This is fish sauce. This um, is squid brand. You can actually find that in Publix and uh, Kroger. Like I said before, I'm not gonna do the unprocessed fish. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna use this. Okay. And how much are you putting in there? Um, a few tablespoons? A few tablespoons, but you just have to taste it later on. and It goes by flavor. Yeah. And then we're going to add the head of the fish for now. Okay. All right, Miss Marie's got, there's the head of the fish and the tail. You just pick it up. It wasn't even that hot. Always wash your hands always. When, you're, when you're cooking. Constantly. I'm always washing. I always have a roll of paper towels right next to me. I'm always washing. Because you don't want any germs to be introduced to your meal. Now this is for about 10 Get minutes. It simmer. Get it simmer. Simmer for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Go on this and, side. and then we'll add more as we go. Yeah. There's the, the tomatoes, the onions. The garlic, fish head. I don't want the lens to get foggy. I have to add uh, a little more fish sauce. Uh -huh. And she added about a tablespoon of salt and maybe a tablespoon of pepper, give or take. Give or take. It is to taste. I, I don't overdo it salt, as you know. It depends on their palate. Yes, of course. And then next, oh, stir let it me, up. Let me see. Stir it up good. Because you just put sauce and stuff in there. It was all right. Yeah. It had a good fishy flavor, mm -hmm. and and the herbs and stuff. And you're gonna eat it. No, no, no I don't know. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna put these in. That's the squash. The squash. Um, that, I, that I lost my finger on. The, the, <laughs> what do you call it? The harder to the harder it takes vegetables? A while. Yeah, it takes a while to cook this. That, that's probably the hardest of everything in the meal. Um, but boy, once they get soft, they taste so the good. The harder vegetables are the one that goes first. Usually, yes. And of course, we put in the onions and the garlic first because you want that broth to have that flavor in it. Pour it in. I don't want the water to splash in me. It won't splash. <laughs> and what's next? The beans. String beans and the okra. Okri. Or orca to some people. Make sure you get that good green orca. And you put salt on that, I'm assuming. No. No? Okay. That's in the broth, so that's good. And then very last will be the eggplant. No, don't forget. Oh, we forgot. Oh, the bitter melon. Yeah. Can't. I was hoping you would forget the bitter melon. <laughs> I don't think that was going to happen, was it? You can see we filled up that pot. Miss Marie always cooks for more than two. It's usually for 200. You think she was in an army reserve or something. <laughs> right? Oh, can't forget that highly coveted bitter melon. Yeah. And that cooks down really quick, the bitter melon. It's a squash, a gourd. And Let how it, long? Until you have to check the vegetables if it's already half cooked or I don't like it mushy. So okay. we have You've got to keep your eye on. We have to yeah, keep okay. an eye on. Already half cooked. I don't like it mushy. Let me, let me check. 
We test it out. You can tell by the feel. Yeah. It went through, so that's, if that one you can cut with the spoon, it's done. Right. If you so. can't slide it with the spoon, it's not done. And it's cooking up nice, as you can see. Now she's putting in the potato leaves, sweet potato leaves. That's the last thing you put in. Then you're going to let it simmer for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Suck up all that wonderful flavor. And once we plate it all up, you'll get to see exactly how cool it looks. Here is the finished dish. Now, Miss Marie, what is this called again? So you remind people? Din Meng Deng. And it's a Filipino traditional dish. Mm -hmm. And... Lots of really good vegetables in there. You got butternut squash, bitter melon, sweet potato leaves, uh, tomatoes, what else? Onions in a fish sauce. I tasted it, it does taste like a fish sauce. There's the smoked <laughs> fish. Now remember, you can use any fish you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, just if you want to make it easy, go with a smoked fish because it's already cooked. And then you just heat it up. And then you have your rice, jasmine rice, not Uncle Ben's, not the cheap rice. You want good rice, get jasmine Thai rice. That other stuff is really not good. This is excellent. Here's a great meal cooked by Miss Marie on a rainy Saturday afternoon. It's been raining mm -hmm. for quite a while, hasn't it? Yes. No? It's good for rainy rainy. Yeah, it is, because you're going to enjoy it, right? You and me both. You. you. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed uh, a new dish from us. At Vacation Station TV, Cooking with Miss Marie. And if you like it, comment, subscribe, and uh, make comments. If you want to learn some of the stuff, uh, Miss Marie is going to do more dishes, and we're going to share them with you. Um, we already talked about what some of them will be, so you got to stay tuned to the station and let you know what's coming up on Vacation Station TV, your virtual getaway. And we will see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.